memory verse. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. And I want you all to remember this because this scripture says, I create new heavens, plural, meaning more than one. And we're going to come back to that later. And the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. But be, be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem, a rejoicing, and her people a joy. Isaiah 65, 17 through 18. King James Version. Next slide. Lesson A. By the end of this lesson, we will know that God will usher in a new heaven and a new earth. Trust that God will keep his promise of a new heaven and a new earth. And praise God that nothing is going to be the same in the new heaven and the new earth. Background scriptures, Isaiah 65, life's need for today's lesson, to remember that God will usher in a new heaven and a new earth. Next slide. Bible learning. To recall God's promise through Isaiah that someday his children would be blessed. Bible application. To appreciate how to live a righteous life while waiting on God to feel, fulfill his promise to usher in a new heaven and a new earth. Student responses. Students will trust that God will keep his promise. Next slide. Lesson scriptures, Isaiah 16, 65, 17 through 17 through 21, and 23 through 25. Next slide. Starting with verse 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. Okay, so what I said, we were gonna pin that earlier. Let's start with who the author is. Isaiah, the uh, prophet Isaiah is the author of this uh, book of the Bible. Isaiah is considered one of the, Isaiah is considered one of the major prophets denoting that by the length of the, the book of uh, Isaiah because it had 66 chapters, not by the significance of the prophet himself. Isaiah records the life and teachings of the prophets who lived in the kingdom of Judah. So this is during the Old Testament. Remember we said in several of our lessons before that you can't really teach just the a New Testament because everything starts from the Old Testament. So you have to go back and forth with both. Do I have any questions or any interjections at this time? was talking about uh, Isaiah. When you were talking about Isaiah, I thought about how they said he was a uh, eagle eye because he can see way into the future. And Isaiah book talked a lot about future things. So he was that eagle eye prophet that could see way into the future. Very good. Thank you for that, Sister Simon. The Old Testament has a protocol within the Christian theology 
and it is referred to many times throughout the New Testament. Some refer to the book of Isaiah as the fifth gospel as well. Isaiah was a prophet of the southern kingdom called by God. His message was 70, preached at 740 BC, the year of King Isaiah. He was a hopeful, a faithful, a loving prophet of God. And as Sister Simon said, he was known as the Eagle Eye prophet because he could see so far into the future because the things that he prophesied then took me back from Genesis to Revelation. So we're going to see that in contrast and comparison later on. Amen. Okay, so we're going to go back to the lesson scriptures. In verses 17 and 18, where it says there shall be new joys. The first thing I thought about was all the churches, friends, everybody that belong to, belongs there shall rejoice. We're going to be glad and we're going to rejoice forever in that which God has created. He has created the things that by his gospel says that it will be everlasting, it's everlasting for the believers. So this is going to be for the believers. My servants shall rejoice. At least they shall Though now they mourn. So while we're still here on this earth, we're still having troubles and trials and tribulations. And we're, we're still mourning and we still have tears of sadness. But we just hold on and remember like the pastor taught us and keep our heads above sea level, S-E-E. -E, keeping our hope and expectation in the new heaven and in the rapture of his church, then we will be able to hold on and stay, stand fast and stay holy and righteous and live a Christian life and a holy life before God. The church shall not only rejoice in those that have somewhat with the church shall rejoice with her. Unbelievers shall be unsatisfied and they're gonna be unhappy in life. So we know that we're li living in expectation, though we mourn and we have many trials and tribulations now. But if we hold on and see the salvation of God, he will rapture us up. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. So in this scripture, the church shall not only rejoice, but be rejoiced, be rejoiced in. Those that have sorrow with the church shall rejoice with her. So those of us, verse 19, so those who uh, suffer with her will rejoice with her. The prosperity of the church shall be a rejoice to God himself who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. So while we are serving him here, we're gonna rejoice in that new Jerusalem. We're gonna have joy, we're gonna have peace and we're gonna have everything coming together where it's gonna be manifested as one and everything will be in peace and in harmony. Next slide. Verse 20, there shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that have not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old, but the sinner being an hundred years old shall be a curse. So in this verse, there shall be new life. Ultimately, deaths by the sword or sickness 
shall be no more. It's going to be no more known as it had been in the past. Because remember in Genesis, here's the correlation. In Genesis, when Adam and Eve were made, when they fell, they had the great fall from grace, from the grace of God, when they sinned in the Garden of Eden, then that made man had to work for everything. Women had to labor and having their children. So the man had to labor in the field. So once they had that great fall, Adam and Eve, that was our great curse to man. So this is when all sin just started running rampant and God put the curse on his people. And in, um, as death has reigned by sin, so life shall be reigned by righteousness. And this is found in Romans 5, 14 and 21. Believers through Christ shall be satisfied with life. Though, though it be even ever so short on earth, if an infant, if they are 100 years old, that's considered dying at a young age age when we get to the millennial we get to the age where the millennial age comes that's after the rapture of the church and god reigns on earth now this is what we put a pen in it up there at the top when i said there was one verse said there will be a new heaven and a new earth and the next verse said god would create new heavens and a new earth well, the first heaven is the millennial age where he will reign and rule on earth for the thousand years and everybody will live in peace and in harmony. Now, this question, that, that kind of had me stunned. So I woke up like four o'clock this morning. I said, no, that's still not sitting right. So I had to do some more research. And so at that time, men and women, women would be on earth. They would still be bearing children and life would go on. But with the ruling of God, with Jesus there with them. So while that is there, a hundred years old is considered young. So they're gonna live for that thousand years. And the people that did not make it in are gonna be accursed. They're gonna be having, their judgment is gonna be men running around still doing all the things they were doing, but they're not gonna be able to enter into where God's people are living, where they are for the uh, thousand years, because their uh, judgment is that they're going to be accursed. Verse 21 on the next slide, and they shall be a houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. So during this millennial stage, it's going to be so much peace and harmony that anything that they build and anything that they plant, everything that they do is going to produce, just like we're trying to live a life now and sow the seed that produces from what we do and how we live and let God's light shine through us. Any interjections here? Any questions? Um, I was thinking too on the lines of when you were talking about Adam and Eve and because of their sin, like you said earlier, uh, creation began to suffer. Uh, but when God creates this new heaven and this new earth, it is where God, where no sin will, where no sin will be. And it's a beautiful place. Men, men will no longer be murdering men. And the lamb and the uh, the lion will lay down together, and there will be no more uh, uh, animals killing animals for food, and men fighting and warring against one another because God is going to be the one that's reigning at that time, and it's going to be to where it should have been before Adam and Eve seen exactly. Man. So, and I think uh, Sister Office will get into it, but this was not the intent. When God created man, this was not seen, you know, that was not the intent. And we're going to see the actual intent when we see the new heaven and the new earth. Thank see, you. man is what the fall of man is what caused sin to enter into the 
to the world. And that's why we have the violence. That's what we have. We see so much going on in the world today. And that was the cause of it. But Isaiah prophesies and talks about that there is a hope. So even when we see these things going on in the world today, we have to know that there is a hope. We were in the AIM, not the AIM convention, the uh, women's convention the other night. And a little girl, she was in the Sunshine Band and she preached and her message was better days are coming better days. So that's what we have to look forward to. Yes, things are going on all around. The sickness is going on, violence, killing, all of, hallelujah. But better days are coming, just like Isaiah had to prophesy to the people that better, yeah, you you in captivity, you've been through this and you, you, you know, but better days are coming. But then when we look back, what caused them to get in that situation? their disobedience and what causes us to be in the situation we are in today, the disobedience and no regard for God. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Sister Connie and Sister Simon. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. There shall be just enjoyment, comforts of life. Whereas before it was uncertain and precautions. The enemies inhabit the lands, the houses, and everything around us. They had control of everything. But once God came in and we, 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 we held on with that hope, like Sister Kylie and Sister Simon said, well then, when he came to reign and rule for that thousand years, everything that came in that part. And I'm going to get to that part, Sister Simon, that you talked about the lion and the Next slide. Looking for a hastening coming of the Lord of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. And usually the Bible says in King James with a fervent heat. And that's just means in intense heat and so my picture here is showing the destruction of the earth and how hot that fire looks compared to the fire that you'll see here because it's going to be fire and brimstone so it's going to be much hotter than even the fire now we're complaining about how hot it is right now in the south and everywhere else how hot it is now we can't stay in the heat here i sure don't want them to put me in the oven i don't know about you but i don't want them to put me in that oven any, anybody has anything? The next slide. Somebody has some. Yeah, go ahead, Sister Simon. We're glad to have Sister Simon here in person on today amen. in Sunday school. Amen, amen. You know, when you start talking about not wanting to be in the oven, I thought about hell. Mm -hmm. And it is too hot to burn forever. It is. So that's one thing we want to strive. Uh, and thank God for how he made a way for us that we have a way to escape, that we won't burn in hell for eternity because it's there. It's there and it's real. Don't make no mistake and think that this stuff is not real. It is real. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And that's that's what I was saying. You know, I don't that fire is going to burn forever. And you get burned on the stove, you get a burn on your anywhere. You can imagine how that pain is, even after the burning has, even after you've been burned, it continues to burn. I'd rather live in that hope. I'd rather get my life right. And we can do it while there's yet hope in the world. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. You know how sometimes we can say, well, you know, some people say, well, Lord, where are you? I, 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 I've I, been praying and I've been praying for the same prayer. And I just, it just seems like he's not, not anywhere to be found. Well, there would be such a good correspondence between God and his people 
that we're just thinking of what we need. And we said, well, Lord, and he's already answered those prayers, whatever we are asking him for. In that millennial age, we will not even remember all the things that happened, all the griefs we had to bear and all the trials we had to go through. It's just going to be awesome. And I think that is well worth living the life that we can live now for Christ so that we will not end up, see Satan already has his punishment. He already know what he has coming and he's only trying to get more and more and more to come in with him. So we as saints, we're trying to get more to come in to, to God, to be saved and to let you know that there is still hope and God loves you and that we're here to help you to show you the way. I just want to bring out uh, earlier, you were talking about the, how we not only need to know the New Testament, but we need to also be uh, mindful of what happened in the Old Testament because we need to always compare ourselves to God's people and how they were rebellious and how things came upon them because they were because they were rebellious. And one of those things that described those rebellious people was the fact that they had a language of repentance, but they did not have the uh, actual actions of being repentant. They didn't have the spirit of repentance. So we have to say, you know, we might have that uh, way of talking but how do we act? And we have to keep that in mind as we are. And that's what helps us see, you know, what happened to them and what caused the, their uh, a curse on them. We don't want to repeat the same thing. So that is the reason why we need to be knowledgeable of the Old Testament, because we see some of the same attitudes now that we saw that they had then. And we need to know that he's going to have the same wrath on us the same way he did them as well. So in other words, they give God lip service, but their hearts are far from him. Lip service. Exactly. And I agree. And pastor often say, we have to stop looking out of the window and look in the mirror. We're so busy looking out the window at what others are doing and they didn't do this and they sinned and they, you know, but we don't take the time to look in the mirror and do self-assessment of our own selves because this thing is serious. It is serious. Amen. And just like Sister Steph said, the Old Testament is going to help us to see the mistakes that they made. Mm -hmm. So if we can see the mistakes that they made, we don't want that same wrath. So we should be striving even the more to do right and do the right thing and please God, because I don't want to be in captivity and all those things as they were before. Is verse 25. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. The bullock is another word for the bull. And thus shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. So here there's going to be such a good correspondence between all the neighbors that the wolf and the lamb is going to feed together. As they did on Noah's Ark. So here we go right back to the Old Testament. Just like they did in on uh on Noah's Ark, when everything was paired in twos, they are as sheep as sheep in the midst of wolves, but they will be safe and unhurt, for God will not much break the power, and even the lion and the lamb will lay together. The lion is going to eat grass like a cow. Can you imagine that? The lion that everybody's afraid of is going to eat grass like a cow. Nobody but God. You put a wolf and a lamb together now, and what do you get? Sister Black Steph's got a, a comment. Oh. And that let us know how much peace is going to be there. Mm -hmm. 
that the lion won't even kill his prey. He'll just eat grass like what's what's available to him. He won't fight for nothing else. Isn't that amazing? It is. It is. That, just, that just let us know the extent of the peace that that will exist. Amen. Uh, Sister Simon. And at verse 24 again. And how it says that and it shall come to pass. This is during the millennium. That before they call, I will answer. Before you even call, God's people and God are in sync. Before you even call, I got you. Ah. I got you. He said, and why are you speaking? I had not already heard it. Yeah. I got it already. I got your answer. I got your back. They're in sync now. Yeah. God's right. people, God, and God's will. And anybody in the virtual audience, if you have a comment, please unmute um, or... Um, Raise your virtual hand. We want to hear from you on this morning. And I was just thinking uh, also in the uh, 24th verse, he said, I will answer while they are speaking and I will hear. I know sometimes we pray and we, some they may pray and we, and when, I wonder if God going to, he might not honor this prayer. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pray this. I'm, he, he said, ask and you shall receive. And I know he said, uh, if you ask anything in my name, I will do. And we, we shouldn't go to God in doubt. We shall ask and pray in faith and believe in God. He said, I will hear them when they speak to me. And we, we shouldn't think that God is so far. He, he will not hear us when we speak. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Just believe when you pray. Glory to God. Uh, Mother Stocker, I see your hand. You can, I think you're muted, so I don't know if you're talking. Okay. You muted again, mother. Okay, now Good you're morning. unmuted. Go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Good I, morning. I had my hand up earlier because I was going to comment when you all were talking about the worship. Uh, and I was just thinking about last Sunday's lesson, meaningless worship just serving the Lord with your lips and that is not received. That's what got Israel in trouble. When Isaiah was prophesying what the Lord had told him about their, they, they were coming nigh, but only with their mouths, with their lips. And he wants sincere, pure wish, worship, honest worship. And that's why Israel was punished because it was superficial. God wants us to be for real with him because he knows. You may fool some of us down here on earth, but you cannot fool God. So we have to be sincere about what we're saying, how we're living, and how we worship God. Amen, amen, absolutely. Thank you, Mother. Thank you, Thank you Mother Stocker. Next slide. Bible definitions. Resurrection kingdom. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountains, saith the Lord. So let's go back to where it says, and dust shall be the serpent's meat. Would anybody like to expound on that? Where it says, dust shall be the serpent's meat. Because in the Garden of Eden, remember, after he caused Adam and Eve to sin, he was cursed to crawl on his belly. So when this says that the dust shall be the serpent's meat, in other words, he's still going to be on his belly. But now the dust will no longer be 
the 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 the, the serpent's meat of the dust is going to be his sustenance. That's what he what he will eat and thrive on is the dust of the earth. Isn't that something? They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. There shall be such a good correspondence between the lions, the people, and their neighbors. There's going to be such peace and harmony that God himself is going to alter the dispositions by his grace. It's all going to come to a full circle. When Paul, who had been persecutor of the disciples and who had being of the tribe of Benjamin, travailed as a wolf. He travailed as a wolf because they had, they had sent him to jail and much of his writings were done while he was either in prison or running and fleeing from them. So they had tortured him so that he himself, Paul himself was, uh, described as being raven as a wolf. And this again is found back in Genesis. Although we're talking about Isaiah in the uh, lesson today, this is found back in Genesis. So I had to go back and forth so much and I had to get back up. Like I told this kind of back up at four o'clock this morning, trying to understand some of the things that it was talking about. Okay, next slide. They're gonna be our definitions. Heavens. And Isaiah 65 and 17 is the Hebrew word Shemayan, the physical realm, including the sky where clouds float and birds fly and the universe where the celestial bodies are located. It also refers to the spiritual realm where God and the angels dwell. So there are two different heavens right there. Your millennial and then your spiritual realm where God will gather his people up and take them to the new heaven. Earth, found in verse 17, Eretz is a Hebrew word and it is the planet Earth, including its inhabitants, land and seas, fervent heat, very hot, glowing, the fervent sun. Can you imagine how hot the sun is? How they tell us to put on the lotions and different things to protect ourselves now. So now can you imagine that sun falling to earth? That's the type, that's the heat that's gonna burn. That's the heat that's gonna burn when that hell fire comes. So that in itself is enough for me to say, hey, I got to do right as much as I can. You have anyone want to expound on this? Sign. We're on Bible definitions talking about the fervent heat. About the fervent heat. That's an intense heat. That's an intense heat. Yes. Uh, and when it's going to burn up everything, that tells you just how hot that fire is. It's going to consume everything. Ain't going to nothing be left. That's heat. Um, that is some hot, 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 hot heat that is going to destroy everything. So we as believers... We, we, the Bible lets us know that these things are coming. And it's also letting us know that prepare yourself. You have to be ready. We as believers, and this is what these lessons come, to let, to guide us, to let us know what's going to happen. Because God don't let nothing come up on us unaware. He's not going to let that happen. He said, because of my sheep, they know my voice. So we know God's, and, and the word of God is God's voice. 
for the believer. So we can, any, any situation that we face, we can go to the word and find our answer because it's there for us. Because this is our tool. This is our guide. This is what help us do everyday crisis and situation. The word of God. When you go to the word of God, that's where you find your answer. Amen. That is exactly where you find your answer. That's why I say study. Show yourself approval. How will you know to do different or to act different or there is something better to show you that you that can improve you and that you can live for God other than studying his word. That word is God. You would never, you would never know about the hope because the hope is in his word. If we didn't study, we would just, you know, we walk by faith and not by sight. But if we did not study and we did not know God's word, if we didn't come here and hear the word preached, if we are not in Bible study, to hear the word taught, if we're not in Sunday school to hear the word taught, then we would just believe what we see. We would believe and imagine if you believed what you saw. Turn on the news today and imagine if you just believe what you saw. But I always see myself on the other side. You know, I can get doctor's reports, but I see myself, I, t- I don't have time I got too much stuff I got to do. <laughs> so I see myself on the other side of it, but it's because I know what God's word says about me. He says, I am healed. My body is healed. You know, but if you don't come and get that, if it's not poured into you, then it can't come back, Dr. Steps. The word, the word gives us hope. And hope eliminates a lot of worry. So that's one of the major, and, and, and that will have an effect not only on our mind, but also on our body. So it's just something that it works for us all the way around. So that's why we have to, not, if we read and study and we still don't understand, we should have the courage to ask somebody and discuss it with somebody that know more than us. And that is one of the reasons why we need to, we need to know the word. We got to know it. In, other, in, in order to survive, we see so much destruction and so much evil now that it's frightening to the human, to the natural self. So we have to consistently remind, be reminded. So that's why it's so important to be conscious of who we talk to, what we watch on TV, what we listen to, everything that feeds into us. We got to be conscious of it because it can actually affect us mentally, physically, socially, the whole body, everything holistically. So that's why we got to know it. Yes, it can. Exactly. That's what happens when individuals choose to commit suicide. That is what they do. They lose the hope that they can even get better that their life can get better. And the word lets us know, even though, as you were saying, even though we can't see how it's gonna happen. What was that pastor would let us know in uh, uh, one of our uh, pastoral teachings lately that we want details. If your fa- you got faith, you don't have to have details, you just have to know it. Just have to know it. So that's why we have to be careful about, as again, who we talk to when we're going through, because saints can remind us of the things that where it might be taken out of us. So you have conversation with people that know the word and that can help feed into you and give you the hope that you might have lost through your problems. Because you know that's a distraction. And it can take away what you do. You might already know this. How many times we already know something? But we get distracted by issues in our life. And then when you talk to somebody, they say, don't you remember what the word say? Don't you know that you don't supposed to be going through this? Don't you know you got to have hope? That you, just because you can't see it. But that is one of the reasons why we have to, you know, say that I've seen several, I heard of several people that are saved lose hope now. And don't think that because you saved that you won't get depressed. 
you won't be full of anxiety. You won't be stressed out and get to a point where you don't want to live anymore. It has happened because that's a distraction that has come against you. So that is something that we need to know and, and be able to recognize that. Know who to go to. And if you need professional help, go get it. Knowing even though God is able, but if you if you need professional help, go get professional help as well. That's a supplemental thing, okay? Amen. But you don't need to just ignore it and say, I'm saved, I don't need no help. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> Amen. Amen. This is all Sunday school. Amen. Yes, because you're healing. God put doctors here on earth for a reason. Luke was a physician. So they're here for a reason. And that could be your form of healing through that doctor or that psychiatrist, whatever it is you need, that that therapist, whatever it is you need. And we have to remember that. I'd say at least 85% of a lot of the sickness, the illness, the diseases that people are turmoiling with now, a lot of it, number one, is caused by inflammation in your system. Then number two, a lot of it is caused by exactly what uh, Dr. Steps just said. It's caused by worry, by, by not, you know, not thinking that you can do it anymore. You can't take it anymore. You just give up on life. But the hope is in his word. Thank God that the hope is still here now. While he is yet, while he yet can be found, let's seek him. Let's get in this word. There is nothing that we, no trial or anything that we can go through today that is not already in that word. You can find something for depression you can find something for every illness you can find it it's there your prescriptions are in his word but you got to have that faith to believe in that word and like if you don't like dr step said seek your doctor they're here god put them there your healing can come through there as well steps reiterate something there's a stigma in our culture in our african-american culture about going to therapists and counselors. And that needs to be erased because it's necessary. He just as though God give us certain gifts, he gives the doctors and the therapists and the counselors gifts as well. And we need to use what he has supplied. It's accessible to us, but we have to take the initiative to get the help that we need. Amen. Amen. Anybody else has anything? Okay, next slide. Light on the word. In chapter 60 through 66, Isaiah addresses his message to the people living in exile, assuring them that they still had a future. Isaiah sees a blessed future for the, na for the nation of Israel. The apostle Paul would later add to this prophecy by revealing the mystery of God's will, which is to unite Jew and Gentile into one body with Christ as the head. And this is found in Ephesians 19, through 1, 9 through 13. Next slide. Introduction, Jerusalem's prophetic, the Old Testament prophetic destiny. The Old Testament portrays a distinctive future for Jerusalem. It will be the worship center when the promised time of renewal comes. The Messiah will take his waiting throne and the nation will be secure. This future is affirmed by most of the prophets, especially Zechariah in chapters 12 through 14. Next slide. This is the introduction continue. The New Testament introduces the concept of a heavenly Jerusalem. All that Jerusalem has been sacred history as political and religious center has foreshadowed what God intends to do on earth. That perfect center of political and religious life is spoken of as the heavenly or new Jerusalem in Hebrews 12 and 2, and also again are found in Revelation 3, 12 through 12 and 10. 
in the beginning, God, Isaiah 60, 65, 17 through 21, very early in Israel's history, God revealed to Moses the beginning of time. Under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the great lawgiver penned these words. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, found in Genesis 1 and 1 in the New Improved Version. This one statement is enough to drive anyone who seriously contemplates it to his knees in worship and in praise to God. Ponder this, next slide. Who was or who were the first of God's perfect creation? So Simon. Adam and Eve. Correct. What happened that caused the turmoil that still exists today? to this day in this present world, what happened? The serpent tempted uh, Eve and then she got Adam to follow. Temptation. Sister Linda. Thank you, exactly. That's when uh, man fell from God's grace. That was the great fall of man, exactly. In the beginning, God. Consider that the galaxy where we live called the Milky Way is only one of the millions of galaxies that are out there. Our galaxy only rotating one 490,000 miles per hour. And yet it takes about 225 years to make one complete revolution. This gives you some idea of how large the galaxy and the universe are. After creating the universe, God was pleased with his creation. So imagine, we know just of this one galaxy, there's so much more out there. And I'm, I'm just guessing that we're probably gonna see that and we're gonna live in those things when God raptures us up. Any comments? Okay. Light on the word. The curse reversed. The climax of the new creation is the removal and the reversal of the curse of Genesis 3. Adam and Eve's sin caused humanity to fall from grace and from God's gracious presence. Their sin affected all of creation. It caused the descendants of Adam and Eve to be born under the curse of sin. Thank God that Jesus came and hung on that cross, suffered, hung, and bled so that both the Jews and the Gentiles can be saved and can be offered back up to Christ. Thank God for the curse reversed. I love that topic. <laughs> the curse reversed. Amen. Sister Office, let's Go ahead and just complete um, uh, the second um, bullet point, and then we'll bring the children in. Their second, some of their second scene. The God's order restored. God's order restored. In the new creation, the wolf and the lamb will feed in the same pasture. The mighty flesh-eating lion will eat grass like a cow. The snake who was cursed to travel on its belly in the dust as a sign of humiliation will now consume the dust as its sustenance. Ponder this. This is just some thoughts. God never intended for violence to be the rule of nature. What did God not create animals to do? What did he not create animals to do? To feed off of each other. Amen. He did not create them to eat one another. What did he not create man to do? Kill one another, violence. 
Amen. And my last but not least, my final thoughts, the book of Isaiah reveals the dimensions of God's judgment and salvation. The terrible judgment prophesied upon Israel and all the nations that defy God is called the day of the Lord. Isaiah refers to the judgment fire and says God will have compassion on his people. Amen. 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 We thank God for Sister Umphrey's and his lesson on today. Good job. Good job. Amen. We thank God. Thank God for each of you that are in our uh, virtual audience on today and for those that are in the sanctuary on today. We thank God for you being a part of Sunday school. Amen. At this time, we're going to make ready to give. And for our young people, they are already in place to dismiss us on this morning. So we're going to um, have them to do our dismissal. And we are going to get ready to give on today. Amen. I'll sing. I'll sing. I'll sing. It's all sing. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Amen. That was Sister Riley that, that dismissed us on this morning. <laughs> Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to make ready to, to give. Amen. You can give. Uh, through Givelify, either Cash App, if you are online, and if you're in person, Deacon Steps is standing here with the gleaner. Amen. Online audience, we love you on today. Amen. We're going to make ready for our um, 11 o'clock worship service. So if you can be here in person, we would love to see you. If not, we can see you um, on Facebook Live on today. Everybody doing okay today? Amen. We thank God for you. And thank God. Gives and Sister Simon is waving, but she don't know they can't see you. Come, you gotta come stand in the y'all wave. It, it won't be long. Hopefully next Sunday we'll have we have the equipment ready. But uh Sister Simon is coming to my computer so that she can. Wait, you they can see you now. <laughs> Amen. Yes, yes, that technology is on its way. It's on its way. We'll have it um really soon so that we'll you all will be able to see the audience. Amen. We thank God for you. Know that our prayers that God will keep you and God will continue to bless you. And we love you. We love you. We love you. So we will see you soon in our um, on Facebook Live or in person. Love you. Bye now. Hey, Sister Monique, I see you. Sister Linda, we see you. God bless you.